Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and the Jazz Piano Fundamental Series, available for signed copies at jeremysiskin.com and for unsigned copies at Amazon. By the way, if you buy it from my website, you get both the book and the PDF, which Amazon will not do for you. But we're not here to sell things today. I'm here to talk about something I'm really excited about, actually. <laughs> this is my fourth take of this video because I'm so excited I keep on just like tripping over myself. Um, and what we're talking about today is coming up with interesting original voicings, right? When I listen to the great pianists, particularly someone like Herbie Hancock comes to mind immediately, that I'm like, that voicing, like that wasn't in the textbook. You know, it's like, there's a lot of great voicings in these books, uh, but usually it's the ones that aren't in there that get you really excited, right? Um, and so I listen to these people, I'm like, man, how did they come up with that? I don't claim to have you know, a definitive answer for you today, but I have this cool process that I've been experimenting with that's kind of new to me. Um, it may or may not be new to you, um, but I wanna walk you through it, show you how it works, and come up with some cool voicings together. So uh, we'll see, feel very unprepared for this, but uh, it'll be fun. So for me, the genesis of thinking about this comes from studying pentatonic voicings, and pentatonic voicings are so cool. Um, the way it works is you start with a scale, right? This is the pentatonic scale. If you don't know about your pentatonic scale, it's the one, two, three, five, six of a major scale. And then what you do is you create a voicing by selecting every other note, right? So skip the D, skip the G. We have to go into two octaves of the scale, right? Here's the second octave there. Skip the C, skip the E, and we end up with this beautifully spaced voicing. And I say beautifully spaced because we love voicing spaced mostly in fourths in the jazz tradition. And then we can start this, we can create a voicing starting on each note. So D, starting on D now, we're gonna skip every other note. That'll get us all the way up to A, right? I'll write that one down in blue. Then we can start it on E. And we're going to track along the same line, but we'll end up on a high C here. Is this making sense? You can't answer me. It's a YouTube video. But it's polite to ask. That's a G there. And if we keep going, you'll just have to trust me or do the, do the math yourself. We'll get this voicing. And we'll get this voicing as well. What I love about these voicings is that not only, as I already said, are they beautifully spaced vertically, but if you play them horizontally, um, you get this kind of incredible effect that no note is repeated between the voicings, which we love in terms of voicings. It's like they kind of fit together incredibly smoothly, right? From each voicing to the next, nothing is coming at the same place. So that's pretty sweet, okay? And so that got me thinking, you know, what if we tried this same process with some scales other than the, um, than the pentatonic scale or the traditional pentatonic scale? I think that that could yield some interesting results. Okay, so first let's start, let's just take it at a really simple level. Let's say we're gonna create a scale out of just three notes. I'm not going to use any kind of like known or existing scale, but let's take just the notes C, E, and B and go through the same process just so you can understand what I mean uh, talking about this process. And I have purposely chosen an odd number. If you choose an even number, it doesn't work so well <laughs> because you end up getting the same results in different octaves. So here, what we could do is we could create a three note voicing, right? Only three notes because there's only three different notes in this quote unquote scale. So C to B to E, I'll write an octave lower here, and then E to C to B. And we're gonna need another note to get the third one. So then purple E to C, oh, sorry, uh, B to E to C. Where does that all go? There we go. 
Okay, like them or not, these voicings share the same characteristics as that pentatonic scale in that they're nicely spaced between them. And there's no rep repeated notes, there's no repetition between voicings. I happen to think they're quite pretty. Right, I could imagine that in a film score. Okay, so let's get back to the world of five note scales. Um, and let's make up our own five note scale. And some, probably some theorists, some weird dudes <laughs> have given names to like every possible five note scale. Um, but I think I was playing with the, around with this one earlier. So D, F, A, B flat. It's kind of actually, maybe it's easier to see it as like, like a B flat kind of a sound. But it's pretty different than the pentatonic scale. And so let's make this one into voices, okay? So I'm not going to write it out for you. I think you probably understand the process by now. So we get B flat, E, A, F, E. Is that right? I reverse the F and the D. And you'll know that if you're doing it right or wrong based on whether you're repeating any notes in the chord or between chords. Okay, you've got to just remain vigilant there. Um, this is also great practice, by the way, while I'm writing. <laughs> Can I do two things at once? That's wrong. <laughs> uh, this is also great practice to not repeat any notes between voicings, right? This is one thing that we generally strive for in voicings is not to have doublings. And these shapes really show your hand. How to have doublings. How to not have doublings, excuse me. Imagine you're playing G minor. So moody. You know, and we could also choose things that reflect different kinds of sounds, like a diminished or an augmented chord. So um, what if we took the four notes of a diminished seventh chord? Let's add in the, you can think of it as the fourth, the eleventh. This is like an E diminished seventh with that A added. So then this is kind of going to be our scale. E, G, A, B flat, D flat. This video might be just a mess, guys. I don't even know. That's weird. Cool, 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 cool. different pitch is following along the track of the scale. It just might be starting at a slightly different place. Those are definitely some voicings I would not have played, you know, uh, without trying this process. thinking more like a whole tone kind of a scale. Um, we could take something like this, right? And then that becomes here. It's just going to be faster to show you like this. Hopefully this works.
right? So again, it shares those aspects that there's no common note um, vertically and there's no common note horizontally. Um, and what's kind of cool is that you can do this as well, just starting with any voicing. So let's imagine that you're, you're comping um, C major and you're going to play this. This does happen to be a pentatonic voicing, but this is a pretty common voicing for C major. And so you're comping. You can go back and forth between these different voicings, which take every other note. Maybe that's a bad example because it's in, uh, it's in C major, but let's take this voicing, a six note voicing for D minor. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna advance in that scale. It's gonna become like a six note scale. same six notes it's like D Dorian without the B and each note is moving to the next adjacent note of that scale and I'm continuing to practice more and more as I kind of discover different pentatonic, six note, three note, four note kind of patterns that I want to use. Um, and I did mention before that you don't want to use an even number, but as long as it's not, you're not treating it as a scale, it works. So let me show you what I mean. So if I'm thinking, and I'm going to take every other note, that's going to be bad news. Right, I'm gonna get this voicing and that's gonna be completely worthless. But if I take a four note pattern starting here, now I've got two notes next to each other in the scale. And so I can think of this as a four note scale and advance and go back as I want. Right? Same thing, you know, a lot, the first C major voicing I teach to a lot of students is this one. We could move that around. Is it different than inversions? Uh, not really, except it's got a specific spacing to it, right? This is like different inversions of an E minor seven, but it's spaced in a specific way where between the bottom two notes and the top two notes, we're always keeping one note in between. Right? All right, folks, those might have sounded like the ravings of a madman, <laughs> but hopefully it inspires you to try some different things and find some new voicings for yourself. And it's just great to practice finding these voicings that have these beautiful interlocking qualities. All right, well, if you liked that descent into uh, madness, I think Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book Two or Playing Solo Jazz Piano might be something that you really enjoy. Because it does, I really try to teach you not just like here are the voicings to learn, but here's the theory and here's how to find them. Um, so uh, if you get made it to the end of this voicing, why don't you comment with, uh, with insanity? because this was a little bit of insanity. And uh, thanks for being part of the process of me going insane. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Bye, everyone.